What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here and today we're gonna to be talking about the most used optic in my collection. Out of all the rifle optics, this is the one that I have used the longest by far. We're gonna be talking about the Trigicon TR24 1-4 AccuPower scope and at one time this scope was in my opinion the best scope on the market And we're gonna talk a little bit about it give it a what 10 year review and then uh, We're going to decide if it's still one of the best options that you can get now before I do that I want to mention my patron supporters Thank you guys very much because of your support to this channel We do a monthly giveaway for this month's gonna be the Peltor range guards All you got to do is be a patron and you're entered into the giveaway also We do a giveaway on Instagram if you don't follow me over there Follow me on Instagram, it's Honest Outlaw Reviews, and we're gonna be doing a giveaway for an Ontario Rat 3 knife, and I love that knife personally. Also, the link for ammo.com, $20 off an order of 200 bucks or more, is in the description below. So what is the TR24? Well, it is a one to four by 24 powered adjustable scope. It has a 30 millimeter tube, and it has a pretty much legendary reputation in the three gun market. One of the things that immediately sets the Trigicon apart from other optics is going to be the dual illumination. Now there are Trigicons on the market today that use LED and batteries and things like that and they are the Accu Power, I believe. This is the Accu Point. I own them both so I get them confused quite a bit. But I actually prefer the Accu Point. I really like this dual illumination. I like it for a shit hit the fan type situation. I like it for a you know, zombie apocalypse, not having any batteries. But what I really like about it is I never have to change it and I never have to worry about going anywhere to a range or something like that and not having my illumination. Now for this particular optic, that's not a huge deal because as you can see in the optic itself, I know it's a little bit blurry, but the reticle on this guy is huge. Now there are different options, especially to in today, they've updated this a lot. But when I bought this scope, I think around eight or nine years ago, I know this scope came out in like 2009 or 2010. I think I got mine in maybe 2011 or 12. This was one of the best in the market and this was the only option available, this post reticle. But I really do like this. Initially I didn't, because I was used to your standard duplex, which you can also get but this is so fast up close. And part of that is gonna be that post that brings you up to it. It really brings your eye up to that giant triangle that when you're shooting up close, you just put the target, you just put that triangle on the target, but when you're shooting further away, you can just use the triangle, just the tip of it, that's where I zero, and I usually zero them at 50 yards, that way they're good at 200. The problem with this optic though that you'll find out, and the reason why it's gotten surpassed by other reticles, like the uh, the Black Force 1000 here, it has a particularly better reticle in my opinion, is that you don't really have much for BDC, like uh, you, you can't really gauge how far you're shooting and how much you want to adjust when you're shooting at distance. So if you're shooting at 300 yards, not that big of a deal because it doesn't cover up that much of the target. But if you're shooting at 400 or 500, you'll find that those big dark posts there have a tendency to obscure the target that you're trying to hit. Another thing that I really like about the scope besides the dual illumination is how they did it. Now the ACOGs, I don't know if anybody you've seen pictures of people or used electrical tape on ACOGs to turn the brightness down. Like if it's super bright outside, the reticle will illuminate a great deal. It'll be like the sun. And sometimes for distance shots especially, it will obscure your vision. So an easy way to fix that is to make a scope shade on the, uh, on the scope itself so you can turn up or turn down the illumination while still using sunlight. And I, I really like that about it. I also like the fact that this scope is very, very light. So this scope's running around 15 or 16 ounces, making it one of, still to this day, one of the lightest optics on the market today. Now, the drawback to that is gonna be that it is a one to four power as opposed to a one to eight. Uh, something like the new Night Force, for example, the NX8 is gonna come in heavier than this, a couple ounces heavier, but it's gonna be one to eight power. And when this initially came out, it was around a thousand bucks, but now you can find them somewhere between seven and 800 usually, and I still think it's an excellent buy for what you get. You get that super close range reticle if you want it, or you can get a duplex. The Trigicon AccuPoint series and AccuPower series have a similar reputation for durability, at least that I'm aware of, as the ACOGs do, because I have beat the shit out of this optic. I mean, you can see that it's been on tons of rifles, it's done tons of different testing. It's one of my go-to optics for just whatever I'm gonna be testing, and it gets taken off, taken off, slammed on the ground, and hitting barricades and whatever else, and it still keeps on ticking. The glass quality is, in my opinion, was excellent nine years ago. 
but kind of subpar for today's standards. Things like the uh, Black Force, which I'm also reviewing right now, is significantly better for half the cost. So if you're looking for just glass quality alone, I think maybe they have updated the glass quality in the new ones, but th like I said, this particular optic is somewhere in the area of eight years old to nine years old, and it is not as good as even stuff that is half the price today. But glass quality isn't everything, believe me, within zero to 200 yards, zero to 300 yards, I can shoot both of these optics pretty much equal. You get really good reliability, really good durability, really good track record, and that's another thing you'll get with this optic is they just work. I mean, they wouldn't be as popular as they have been for the last 10 years unless they worked really well and the vast majority of people like them. You can also get any scope lever you want, you can get whatever caps you want, and uh, the 30 mil tube allows for a little better light transmission, which is really nice, and that was kind of a big deal back then but now most uh, common scopes are going to have that as well let's get to the real question would i buy this scope today and the answer is yes i really would uh, if i could get this for 800 or even 700 dollars, i would have no problem buying this scope now i wouldn't use it for a three gun optic i wouldn't use it for a long range optic but i would use it for a variable home defense optic uh, it's very durable, very reliable. I know it's always on. And what I mean by that is I live in the middle of nowhere. So a lot of times I keep a rifle in the living room and I will use it to either shoot coyotes that are trying to kill my dogs or my animals or I will use it for whatever other reason other than a person barging in the door while I'm trying to sleep. I mean, there's other reasons to use rifles to defend your homestead than just people. So if you lived on a ranch and you were looking for one scope, you want something for CQB distances and you want something to shoot coyotes or hunt with, for example. Now some quick stats on the scope before I get out of here, that way I don't forget. It has 90 MOA of overall travel. The field of view is at 100 yards, it's 97 to 24 feet. The cap turrets here are quarter turn, which I think is actually impressive. Now one of the cons that I wanna talk about that I think people make a big deal out of in reviews, but I don't think it's as big a deal as what most people assume it is, is going from a dark room into a light room. So if you're shooting out of a dark room into a very visibly bright room, you're gonna have some washout of that red reticle there, and that's because the sun isn't powering it enough while you're in the dark room, and it's gonna overbear the light that's needed while you're shooting in the light. The problem I have with that logic is that if the red is not there, yes, it's slightly less visible, but you still have a giant black etched reticle that is very easy to use. You know, that's one thing I think is always overstated. This is not a red dot. If my aim point goes down, there's nothing there for me to use. This has an etched in reticle, so if the illumination goes down, you still have a black reticle, which I guess I've been using since I was a little kid, so it doesn't bother me. Other than that, I think it's still, to this day, if you're looking for a one to four or kind of a do-it-all optic that's very lightweight, this is a phenomenal choice. The problem with the Trigicon series is that even if you jump from one to four to one to six, let's say, because you want a little bit extra magnification, or even a one to eight, which they do make, you're jumping up a lot in weight as well. And if you're looking for a lightweight, sleek platform, something you can throw on a four-wheeler or in the back of a truck or whatever it's going to be, and you're going to go out and check fence posts, I think this is a phenomenal option. Also, if you're going to do that and then still flex into home defense, or you might shoot a three-gun match here or there, it's not gonna be a detriment to you by any means. So if you have one of these or thinking about getting one of these, I would still recommend it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.